So good evening, good evening, good evening. 700 people inside for the cook fest. Chef Gunner in the building. And uh, trust me, we are going to feast. Let me get away with this uh, graphic with the scoreboard. Let me switch back one sec. Uh, but big up to everyone inside. Uh, make sure you are fully subscribed to the channel. And uh, make sure... There we go. You can see me again now. Bosh. I look like an alien. Look how bright I am. <laughs> um, but yeah. Big up to everyone. Make sure you are fully subscribed. Make sure you sub to Lee Reacts as well. I will be back on there for another watch along later. Uh, but we obviously uh, on the Suaves. Happy football day. And uh, we've got a lot to get through. I need to uh, just try and transfer some of these files over to my Mac. So while I'm doing that, big up to the 200 people that have 221 people that have already um, already uh, liked the video. Big up to everyone who came over from the uh, the watch long I've just done that boring dead West London derby. Uh, the last Palmas game against Villarreal was clear. Yeah, almost like the Premier League's trash, isn't it? Cheers, guys. But anyway, today is the start of a new series we're going to roll out on this channel. And I know he's watching as well. Cheers, guys. Uh, so cry more, Thomas. Nobody cares. Uh, nobody cares, like genuinely. But we're going to expose your BS today, my friend. And uh, yeah, it's going to be immaculate. Immaculate. Right, how do I send this? Bear with me, people. Obviously, I haven't had time to do this, hence why I'm doing it now. But there we go. Anyway, where are we at? Let me send these files over. We've got, we've got a lot to get through, people. Airdrop. Bosh. All right, we're going to airdrop some files through, and we're going to listen to some of the crap this geezer spouts. And then we're going to go and check out some of the articles he's written. Then we're going to go to his channel. Let's see if it all marries up. Let's see if it all marries up, guys. You can do it, guys. Let's see if it all marries up. Oh, what have I done here, you donkey? No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. What the fuck have I done here? Bear with me, lads. And lasses and unicorns. Non-binary unicorns, of course. Right, let me send that again. I sent it to the wrong place. Save to downloads. That's what I wanted. Uh, but yeah, big up to everyone locked in. Also, tomorrow... Um, we're going to do free watch-alongs tomorrow. Free watch-alongs. We're going to do both the Premier League games, and then we're going to do the uh, El Clasico um, final, Super Copa de España final. Uh, we're going to do that tomorrow. So, um, yes, make sure you come and check that out as well, people. Let me see, see if I can send all of them in one go. Maybe the file was too big. Let me see. Let me see. I'll read some of your comments out. We'll wait till the uh, the viewing figures go up a little bit. There we go. Accept. Save to downloads. Oh, hey, this is looking immaculate so far, my friends. Free videos from iPhone. Mm -mm. But I'm got robbed. Hey, my son scored the winner from the pen. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Right, that's all done. That is all done, my friend. Look at my daughter. What are you doing? Dad, can you buy me this tracksuit? This is the one I want for when I go on holiday. Get out of here, man. Leave me alone. We're busy trying to earn money so you can spend it. Anyway, let's, let's read some of your comments out. Let's wait for the viewing figures to go up a little bit, and then we're going to immaculately dissect this guy's absolute BS. I've always found it funny that over the years that somebody can continually sit with a smug grin on their face lying to people. Like, I've always found that that must be such a good talent because this particular person was a teacher and uh, he didn't like his job. Fair enough. I didn't like my job. Uh, he wanted to get into YouTube. Fair play. Uh, Scotty Boy Groomer gave him a channel. Uh, because he couldn't hack it because he's a pussy. And, um, oh, my demons, my demons. The original, the original negative and toxic channel 
was originally, funny enough, the channel that Tom Canton owns and has now. But it wasn't him that owned it. It was Scotty Boy Groomer. And the reason I'm calling him that is because he sits on his Twitter account chatting absolute rubbish about grooming negativity. I think he forgets that he was the original negative channel out there. Then off of the back of that, AFTV exploded. Bosh. And uh, yeah, he was the original. But he had enough of that channel because of the backlash and the heat he was getting because he's a weak individual. Hence why he gets bullied at work. And that uh, he gave it to Tom Cannon. Who then, it was on, what, six and a half, seven K? Um, in about a year and a half, it went up to about 8K. By which time, I had a channel called Gunner Bang, uh, which went to 12K. I locked myself out like a prat of my own account. Good one. I pressed the wrong, uh, the wrong option and said it wasn't me signing in. <laughs> So, yeah, they, they uh, wouldn't let me get back in that account. Um, I then had six months away from YouTube, set up this channel, and absolutely blitzed past the 8.8K, so the 2K subs that Canton got in that 18-month period, and um, stopped going on his shows, because I used to go on his shows. And uh, funny enough, because he never likes to tell anyone this so i'm going to do it anyway because i don't care i have no filter i'm not trying to impress people i'm not looking to oh my god i need my media pass and if i say something out of turn or untowards i won't get my media pass uh, no one cares yeah i don't care i'm not looking for a media pass mate i have full freedom i'm sitting in a fucking dressing gown swearing smoking a fag sipping on a beer watching the highlights of las palmas against Villarreal in the confines of my own gaff, and nobody can tell me anything. If I don't want to work, I don't work. If I want to get up at four in the afternoon, I get up at four in the afternoon. If I want to stay up until 7 a.m., I stay up till 7 a.m. Because when you have freedom in your life, you have no filter. When you have freedom, you're fully in control of what you do. Yeah, nobody tells you what to do. You don't answer to anybody. Don't, I don't answer to anyone. If I don't want to do anything, I ain't doing it, mate. Yeah, and I would suggest to the 1,252 people, including him that's watching it, um, that when you uh, when you get to the point in your life, yeah, where you can actually be free of BS and um, control and coercion, yeah, you might actually be happy, mate, because none of these people are happy. They're happy with their careers. None of them are happy. Yeah, and my mate said this to me the other day on the back end of the Liverpool watch along. Yeah, anyone who was watching that will remember what he said. But if it was if you was watching at that particular point near the end, he said these people are born in deficit. Yeah, they're still buffering. Big up my boy Jolian, one of the most intelligent people I've ever met in my life. Yeah, but he also yeah is my best friend, one of my besties on the whole planet. Yeah, he is an elite level person in every aspect of his life. He is elite, standard level one hundred. He also went on to say this: when you look in the mirror. You can't lie to yourself. You may be able to lie to your mum, your dad, your wife, your boyfriend, your unicorn, um, whatever, Twitter people, yeah, colleagues at work. You might be able to lie and finesse all of them people. But when you stand there and look in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth or brushing your hair you know, or toweling yourself off after a shower or a bath or whatever, you know, mate. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. This particular guy, I... Like I said, he doesn't like to tell people this. I didn't help him with his channel. We had a bit of a fallout. And I told him I ain't coming back on his channel years and years and years ago. This is maybe, what, five years ago? Probably about five, about four, four and a half, five. It must have been about five years ago. Four, four and a half, maybe. Either way, I was still living in England. And I've been here, what, just over four years. So, yeah, about four and a half years ago. Then he's asking for advice. How do I do this? How do I do that? So me being the nice guy, which my name's Mud in this whole social media thing, anyone who actually knows the truth knows I'm actually genuine with it. Yeah, and I'll help anyone. Yeah, 
but you start taking the piss go jog on here de puta yeah real talk yeah and when i'm done i'm done mate yeah when i'm done i am done yeah and i'll cut you off real quick yeah i'll cut you off like i'm turning a light switch off mate yeah real quick done see ya adios i actually sent him my analytics i showed him how much i earn at that particular point i showed him how many views i get how do i grow the channel how do i grow the channel his words yeah and i know you're watching this as well yeah you know i ain't got no filter so i don't give a shit tom yeah right i'm sick of your bs bruv yeah i'm sick of you lying and conning people yeah because you want your media pass and you want your career good luck to you well done you've got out of a shit job i've done the same yeah big up to you but don't lie to people mate yeah don't lie to people Everything I say on here, I say offline as well about this football club. This football club is a joke, an absolute disgrace, yeah? And because you've buddied up with Football London and it's your job and now you're interviewing players and managers, yeah? There's no way in a billion years you can ever give your actual honest thoughts, mate. You can't. Otherwise, your boss will be on your case. The club will be on his case. So on and so forth. It's called accountability, something lacking at this football club. Well, anyway, off of the back of my advice and his hard work, yeah, because he does work hard on that channel, um, or did at the time, uh, maybe less so now, he doubled the size of that channel real quick. Funny that, isn't it? Oh, Lee Gunner helps. All of a sudden, your channel doubles in size. <laughs> Funny that. Funny that. But anyway, the only reason he was growing that channel while still doing his teaching job, is so he could get his media pass because he wanted to be a journalist. Fair play to you, mate. Yeah, everyone's got hopes, aspirations, dreams. Everyone wants to get better. Everyone wants to get better. They want to get better in their life. They want to get better financially, et cetera, et cetera. In every aspect of everyone's lives, they sit there and go, how can I make more money? How can I save more money? How can I get a better car? How can I get a bigger house? How can I do... I don't know, replace these shit trainers I've got with nice trainers. How can I get a better dressing gown? Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to this football club, yeah, these people have no standards. These people are lying to keep their access, to keep their interviews. Oh, I spoke with Gabriel Jesus the other day, blah, 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 and he knows that he, he needs to do better. Did you ask him why he told the world, mate, on international duty, that his main attribute is not scoring goals. Why did he, did you ask him why he said that? Oh, you didn't, did you? Yeah, how about start asking proper questions instead of stupid, ge generic, BS, AI bot questions. Oh, hello, Mikel. <laughs> you say it's lovely. Get out of here, man. I'm sick to death of these pricks. Yeah, sick to death of them. Every single time I do a press conference reaction, it is the same crap. Yeah. Will the goalkeeper whose name begins, second name begins with R, be starting in goal, Mikel? He, 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 he. Yeah, it's, it's literally tea and biscuits and a jolly up. Yeah, and they're peddling the club narrative. I know how it works in these press conferences. Yeah, I know how it works in these press conferences. 100%. Yeah, the manager knows what the questions are going to be or there or thereabouts. There might be a curveball every now and again, but the, the manager always knows pretty much what the line of question is going to be. They also sit there and say to um, to the manager or to the comms guy, yeah, what would you like to get out of this press conference? Why do you know it? Do you notice, right? Why do you think, yeah, that every press conference, like all of a sudden, there's four questions in a row about Eddie and Ketia? Because that's what the narrative is. Pedal out the Eddie and Ketia narrative today. Then the next time it'll be about VAR. The next time it'll be about Emil Smith Rowe, yeah. Sort of questions they ask is, um, what does um, what does um, say Gabriel Jesus's injury mean for Eddie and Ketia? I mean, what kind of bullshit is that question? What What do you mean? What does it mean for Eddie and Ketia? What does Jesus's injury mean for Eddie and Ketia? What kind of questions that get me in a press conference? You get proper questions, mate. Yeah, generic. BS, big up flawless. I see you, my bro. Always love my guy. Always, always. Yeah, I'm sick to death of it. Yeah, go through the questions they ask in the press conference. It is pathetic, absolutely pathetic. And between this geezer, Ornstein, he's one of the worst. Yeah, proper brown envelope inmate. Proper big up Johnny Minerals, brown envelopes and that. Yeah, Charles Watts, another one. Oh, Mikhail, I've written a book about Arteta's revolution. Your, your revolution. 
Revolution. You've won one trophy out of 16. What are you waffling? One out of 16. What are you waffling? Where was this energy for Unai Emery? Has anyone written a book about Ange Postacoglu yet? Has anyone written a book about Unai Emery yet? No? Oh, okay. Has anyone written a book about Ancelotti? Who's the most successful manager in Real Madrid history, by the way. He's in another final Sunday, but I'm told he's washed. Yeah. What did he do at Everton? Uh, beat your manager home and away, mate, and finish two points behind with a worse team. What are you talking about? Oh, but what did Conte do at Chelsea? He won the league. Sorry, Tottenham. What did he do at Tottenham? What did he do at Tottenham? Finished above your manager in his first season and got top four, mate. The top four that you lot have been waffling about in press conferences, the top four that you lot have been writing dead articles about, the top four that you've been waffling about on YouTube channels left, right and centre, the top four, top four, top four, top four. It's talking about top four. I live in Spain. They ain't waffling about top four out here. I've never heard a Man City fan talk about top four of you. Oh, just because there's no Man City fan. Shut up. I've been to the Etihad a number of times. And trust me, every time I've been, that stadium's full. We carry on before we get into some of these clips. Anyway, anyway, what did Josie do at Tottenham? Um, got him to a League Cup final and they sacked him three days, or five days before it, whatever it was. How many finals has this manager been to? One. Oh, so that washed up Jose at that dead team down the road that everyone laughs at. Yeah, all Arsenal fans laugh at them. <laughs> They're rubbish. Jose managed to get to the same number of finals as Super Mick Arteta, who's the greatest manager in world football. Best looking Spaniard we know. There's a sign in the stadium that says it. There's a banner in the stadium. We've got Super Mick Arteta. He's the best looking Spaniard we know. How is that even allowed in the stadium, by the way? Just saying. But anyway, he's managed to get to the same number of finals with that dead team as Super Mick Arteta. I'm watching Dan Potts' show the other day. The amount of bollocks I heard on that show. We have some clips from that show. Don't worry, I'm playing them in a minute. Yeah? Absolute garbage. Garbage. Absolute garbage. I'm sick to death of it. Sick to death of it. Yeah, every single day, one of these mega mutants comes out the woodwork with another like ridiculous article, yeah, another stupid tweet, another stupid YouTube video, gnawing off this manager. Yeah, in terms of this particular fella, the only reason he's doing it is to keep his access and keep his bosses happy. Football London is absolutely miles clear as the worst online newspaper out there. You literally just have to be a pompous, condescending twat. Yeah, speak very posh. Oh, yes, look at me. Oh, yes, well done. Oh, yes, lovely jubbly. I've got a calculator out on match day. Yeah, and a spreadsheet and pie charts and a compass. Oh, what's the XG? Oh, but don't worry. We won on field tilt. Let's play that clip again because he's a prat as well. And he's definitely on this series at some point. Let's play that again. Yeah, trust me. We're cooking all day. I, I ain't got to start work on the watch along for another two hours so we can carry on, mate. Yeah, I've got all day. I've got all. Oh, the time in the world. Come on, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Right. Where are we? Bookmarks. Right. Let's, let's, for all the people that haven't seen this, and there's 1,900 of you inside, big up to everyone locked in. Pam the like button. Smash the likes. 2024 is the year of factual information. I am sick to death of these pricks. Absolutely lying and spreading misinformation. Their yeah, palming it off as real information. They're liars. They're lying to the public. They're lying to themselves. Yeah. They're lying to everybody out there. I am sick to death of it. Yeah. Oh, but you're toxic and negative. Shut up. Yeah. The game is about winning. Yeah. Not progress. There is no progress in football unless you've won, mate. Yeah. How do people not grasp this basic, basic concept? There's a predefined metric in sport for success. It's called trophies, medals. You either win at the end of the season or at the end of the race, say a 100-meter sprint, you either win a medal or you don't. Oh, yeah, but Lee, in the Olympics, you get a silver and a gold. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? The silver and gold, uh, sorry, the bronze and silver 
yeah, get given out before the gold. Now, both of them prats have to stand there and watch the geezer or the bird or the unicorn, yeah, get the gold. Do better. Yeah, do better. Yeah, do better. There's predefined metric in football and in sport for success. It ain't finishing fourth, sixth, or going from eighth to fifth to second. Yeah, that is not progress. And do you know why it's not progress in football? Because at the end of the season, the season ends. Then you all reset and start again on zero. How's it progress? You just finished less positions away from the top. That's it. You haven't progressed. Oh, we finished second. We was in a title race. Yeah. These dickheads sit in press conferences. He was probably in the press conference, this one. The day that Nottingham Forest beat us, the press conference for that day, yeah, for that game, when Nottingham Forest beat us and we handed City the title before they'd even kicked a ball. Nailed on, if he weren't in the press conference, one of his chums was, right? And that manager sat there laughing and smiling to the world, yeah? Another pompous prick, yeah? Smiling, arrogant, smiling to the world when we've just thrown away an eight-point lead and bottled a title to the point that if we don't win the game, City have won the title, yeah? And even if we do win the game, we ain't winning it anyway. And he's telling the whole world to the press that are all sat in front of him like little lap dogs that we've we've brought a dog a chocolate labrador and we've called her win at what point did any of these dickheads stand up and say excuse me you've called it what you've called it what yeah but Mikel, you haven't won you haven't won for four years mate not one of them stood up and said anything that tells you all you need to know about these people yeah they do not give two flying f's about this football club they give an F about their career. And if that means that they can get into the football club and that's their career, yeah, they might support Arsenal. Well done, mate. But when you're sitting there in press conferences, not questioning this manager yeah, for his BS, buying a dog and calling it win, and not one journalist sat there and asked him anything about it yeah, and questioned it. Not one. Not one. Yeah, not one. Then they're writing their articles. Writing their articles. Oh, yes, look, this is great. Oh, we're on the upward trajectory. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go again. Yeah. They're conning you all, mate. They're absolutely finessing people left, right, and center. And like I said, Football London is the worst out of the lot. Yeah. That is the worst out of the lot. Football trends writer. What? A football what? Football trend writer. Well, so you're just seeing what all these other mutants with big accounts online are saying, which then gets traction because they're followed by aspiring mutants. Yeah, and want to be aspiring mutants. And then that goes viral and trends. So now you're going to write an article on some mega mutant online chatting absolute crap. And now you're going to put that out there on Football London website. Excuse me? How about we stop this BS, mate? How about that? How about that? How about that? How about let's just stop chatting crap? Yeah? How about let's hold this club accountable? Yeah, you hold yourself accountable. I'm sure you hold your missus accountable. I'm sure you hold your family members accountable, your friends accountable. But this football club, no, you can't hold it accountable. Why? Oh, because you won't get back into the press conference. You might lose your job. Oh, I'm panicking because I'm going to lose my job. <laughs> These absolute scumbags have ne nearly buried this football club. Nearly buried it nearly buried it yeah im watts have you noticed weekly's back spreading misinformation about thomas party not being on the plane for the u.s tour but he was on the plane yeah he had to go on loan to nottingham forest and chat crap about their club for a year noticed he's wormed his way back why has nobody brought that up yeah don't worry he's on the list as well for this series another weird off-key guy proper off-key anyway Anyway, let's cook. Let's cook. In fact, before we cook, let's just play this field tilt because this is what these pompous, condescending little twats that all think they're amazing journalists. Nobody is a journalist anymore in this era. I'm sorry, you're not. Yeah, especially in football. None of you people, yeah, none of you people are journalists. Yeah. You're just writing bollocks. You don't challenge or question the manager. You all sit in press conference nodding like a dog. Like, oh, yes, the church. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. None of you lot do 
journalism. Yeah, you're all puppets on a string peddling the club narrative. Don't think I don't know what goes on at that club. I've probably got more inside information on that football club than you have, and you're inve invested in it by getting in there. Yeah, trust me, you have no idea. No idea. Yeah, nobody is a journalist that goes to them press conferences. They and the club are working together and colluding together to finesse every single Arsenal fan out there into thinking that losing is fucking success. Yeah, they're working hand in hand. We'll give you access. If you be a good puppet for the year, you might get the interview with Stan or Josh. Yeah, if you be a good puppet, you can put Fabrizio in the bin, Charlie boy, by saying party's coming. Yeah, he put Fabrizio in the bin, didn't he? Oh, what's he? Yeah, put him in the bin. But he was a good puppet all year. So you can have that story. You get a little snippet over there. Oh, you might be allowed to go and interview Gabby Jesus and ask him a load of crap questions that you're never going to get proper answers to. Yeah. Round and round and round and round we go. Round and round. Do you remember Turkish spoke about the roundabout? The roundabout. Well, here we are, people. Here we are. Here we are. Anyway, it doesn't matter. He hasn't yet posted. Maybe he's uh, Scott's uh, upset himself. Uh, but in the first half, we won on field tilt. So we will take that. We will absolutely take that. 61.9. In the first half, we won on field tilt. Shut the fuck up, mate. Honestly. Field tilt. This is what these twats do. And he's another one. Anyway. Just so we can deal with factual information. Yeah, we're dealing facts about this football club. Oh, here's another load of crap. Listen to this. Listen to this. Let me, let me play this. Top four. That season, we were fighting to get back in the Europa League, not top four. So we overachieved in the first place to then bottle it. Last season, no one was talking about us going on a title race last season. It was about could we get top four mm. after we just bottled it. We then led the Premier League. So it... If what we're going to do is kind of shoot shoot for the moon and land on the stars a little bit, I don't mind that so much. Do you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, we are still overachieving. This is what we're dealing with. We're overachieving, yeah? What else did he say? You feel like Arsenal are bottling the title right now. I don't think we ever had a title to bottle this season, to be perfectly honest mm. with you, mate. I, I, I think this season has been a bit of a false equivalence in the sense that City haven't had De Bruyne. He's back for the FA Cup title. Right, so we're overachieving, yeah? And top four, top four. Nobody gave us a chance to win the title. Nobody gave us a chance. Well, hold up a minute. So because nobody gave us a chance, and this is what this Canton fella does as well. Nobody expected Arsenal to be in a title race. Nobody expected it. So because nobody expected it, that's a, a great reason as to why we can't win it, yeah? No pundits, no fans, nobody out there. They're writing articles about nobody expected it. We're overachieving. This is great. Let's go on a YouTube channel. Man's on True Geordie's channel chatting smack. I don't even know who that geezer is. Never seen him in my life before. Funny enough, he looks a little bit like Tom Canton. <laughs> Why do they all look the same? Why do they all sound the same? Anyway, let's read out some factual information before we put this geezer in the bin. Uh, where are we? Oh, here's a new one for you, Thomas. Here's a new one. Yeah, here's a new one, mate. A new one for you, mate. Watch this. Where are we? Hey, my manager, you know. Bosh, proper. Oh, but what did he do at Everton? Get out of here. Get out of here. Where is it? 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 Smash these likes up, guys. You can do it, guys. Oh, there's your manager, Canton. Your manager, yeah? Yeah, this is the manager that you're idolizing, apparently, yeah? Your manager's got another man's meat in his mouth, bruv, being serenaded by another geezer after he's touched his meat and that. Yeah, crazy, man. This is wild. This club is buried. Uh, but profit and sustainability. How can we afford to go to Dubai? <laughs> profit and sustainability in that, yeah? Oh, here we go. Here's a new made-up metric for you, Cannon, because I know you love stats. Yeah? Expected escapes. Escape rate. Basically, a player completed a pass whilst being pressed. Musayela had a 63% escape rate today. Uh, yes, I spelt Musayela's name wrong, Thomas, because I know you're a teacher and very pompous and condescending. My bad, but I don't give a fuck. Anyway, anyway, let's read out some factual information. 
I read this out yesterday on the show, I think, but I'm going to read it out again because I know this Pratt's watching. <laughs> so let's read it out because he loves to gnaw off this manager. He loves to chat absolute garbage about this manager. Oh, yes. Well, Mikel, Mikel, you wait till you see some of the clips I'm going to play in a minute of this geezer talking about this manager. Anyway, five league finishes before Super Mick. Fifth, sixth, fifth, second, third. Oh, but the landscape was different back then. No, it wasn't. The aim is still to win. Everyone starts on zero points. Everyone plays each other twice. And at the end of the season, you see armpits from one team. Everyone else lost. Oh, yes, but the landscape. You're not a gardener, mate. Shut up. Yeah. Oh, but this player's got a higher ceiling. Are you architects as well? These people chat absolute crap. Anyway, current finishes under Super Mick. Eighth. Oh, but he inherited a mess. He inherited a mess. He inherited a mess. We just finished fifth. Yeah, and they love to chat this crap as well about Unai Emery, yeah? About, oh, we were fighting relegation. No, we weren't. We were eight points off of top four, mate. We were currently sat eighth when he got sacked. Eight points off of top four. Eight with 25 games to go. Stop waffling. Stop waffling. These people are getting put in the bin this season. And trust me, yeah, between the size of this channel, Rance's channel, Saeed's channel, yeah, and a few other channels out there, big up Matty, big up Northside, big up um, Carefree Lewis, yeah, big up Curtis, big up Troops. Yardman's now got his channel. Trust me, yeah, trust me. And anyone else I've missed, I apologise. Yeah, trust me, there is enough traction on this platform, which, by the way, is eight times bigger than that dead platform. Trust me. Everyone's getting put in the bin this year, this year. Everyone is getting put in the bin this year, yeah? Because we've got enough traction, mate. Enough traction. I've got, what, 2,500 people watching this? Yeah, 2,500 people watching this. Everyone's getting put in the bin this year. All right, honourable shout to Potsy as well. Come on, Pots, yeah? I've got some, um, I've got some clips off of the, uh, the BS This Idiot Canton was spouting. I've got some clips off of Dan's channel. I got some clips. I uh, screen grabbed them. I screen grabbed them this afternoon. Lovely. Before I went live. We are smoking that Canton pack real quick. But anyway, let's carry on with factual information because nobody's better than Super Mick Arteta. So we'll carry on again. So yeah, current league finishes. Eighth, eighth, fifth, second. Oh, but, 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 but. Progress. Excuse me. Can you tell me then how it's progress? How does eighth, eighth, fifth, second, and the current season we're on, we're suddenly better than fifth, sixth, fifth, second, third? Can somebody explain that to me? Because unless he wins it, it's not progress, is it? Anyway, trophies won five seasons before Super Mick Arteta. Two FA Cups. Trophies won under Mikel. One FA Cup. Plus the rest of this season, he has the league in the Champions League. Good luck. You're winning neither. European record. Because apparently left, Unai Emery left a mess. So did Wenger. They left a mess. An absolute mess that this manager has come in, yeah, like a road sweeper. He's swept up all the mess. And he's turned the club. He's changed the culture. There's progress. We're on the upward trajectory. Get out of here. You lot are waffling, mate. Yeah, facts don't care about your feelings or your fat fucking fantasy land. Yeah, get out of here. Anyway, the season before Super Mick rocked up, oh, yes, we was in the Europa League final. Albeit, we got absolutely embarrassed. And it's a disgrace here, guys. The season before, oh, yeah, Europa League semi. Me and Troops were there. Big up Troops. Yeah. Home and away. Yeah. Fake fan. Fake fan. Yeah. Before that, three round of 16s in the Champions League. European record under Super Mick, who's turned the club around. Europa League 32. Oh, we didn't qualify before that. Oh, cool. First time that we hadn't qualified for over 25 years for Europe, mate. 25 years. Before that, he lost to our previous manager in the semi-final.
And before that, he inherited Unai's Emery, Emery's squad that had already qualified. What a turnaround, mate. What a turnaround. Let's go to the League Cup. League Cup, five seasons before Super Mick Arteta. Fourth round, quarter final, final again. Big up. I was at the final. Again, another disaster. Cheers, Wenger. Quarter final, fourth round. League Cup under Mikel, Super Mick. Fourth round, third round, semi final, quarter final. This is going well, isn't it? What a turnaround from this manager. I mean, who could do better than Super Mick Arteta? Uh, five FA Cups, uh, FA Cup five seasons before Mikel. Fourth round, third round, won it. Sixth round, won it. FA Cup under Mikel, won it. Well done. Fourth round, third round, fourth round, third round. This is going great. Yeah, this is going real great, isn't it? Community Shield record. Five seasons before Super Mick. Two, Dos Platos, Io de Puta. Yeah, Dos Platos. Ch uh, Community Shield record under Super Mick. Dos Platos. Yeah, one by default. A city did a treble, so we qualified. Going well, this, isn't it? Money spent. Five seasons, gross, before Super Mick rocked up. 488 million euros. Money spent under the greatest young manager the world has ever seen. He's got the youngest squad. He's now the third youngest squad. Not that that matters because it was done by design to lower the fucking standards. Use these idiots like Canton you know, to peddle out narratives that the club want pushing out to lower the standards to make out that we're progressing because they're all sexually attracted to the manager. Cool. And all the players. Money spent under Super Mick, 688 million euros. Both of them figures, by the way, are off transfer marks. So if you want to check them, check them. I don't care. How is that any better? In fact, it ain't even on the level of our last five seasons before this manager rocks up, is it? It's not on the level, is it? We've won less trophies, had worse league finishes, had worse knockout competitions. How is, how is this guy any good? Who could do better than Super Mick Arteta? Uh, maybe somebody who's fucking qualified. How about that? Yeah, maybe somebody who's qualified, mate. But no, what did Ancelotti do at Everton? Well, I'll tell you something. He's about to win his seventh trophy in two and a half seasons when he beats Barca tomorrow. Yeah, that's what he's doing, mate. Yeah, most successful manager in Real Madrid's history. But, 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 but 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 what did Conte do at Tottenham? Idiots, man! Finished above your manager, the greatest young manager in world football. Finished above him in his first season. It's almost like these dickheads are lying all the time, isn't it? Anyway, let's play some clips. Let's get into the clip section now. There's two and a half thousand people inside. Wait, bang these likes up. Let me read these super chats out. Big up to everyone who's dropped a comment in as well. Yeah, we'll come back to comments. Wait, we can cook all day, mate. We're 45 minutes in. Yeah. And we ain't even started with the clips. Hey. Let's go. Big up to Tony. Fulham played today. Shows Arsenal is rotten. Um, yep. They've uh, they've taken a win and a draw against us. We've taken a whole one point off of Fulham. Don't worry. We're in phase four, lads. Yeah. Phase four. It's a five-phase development plan. It's a five-phase. Charlie Boy Watts told us. Canton's told us. Everyone's told Oh, there's phases. It's a project. Project. Pro Did anyone ever hear of trust the process in football before this geezer rocked up to Arsenal? Yeah. And now imagine this. Birmingham City hired a new manager the other day after sacking Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney got that job and they were sixth in the table in the championship. They sacked him when he was 20th. And they had the audacity and the barefaced cheek yeah, to tweet out that picture of that manager and put, trust the process. Excuse me? Trust what? It just took us from 6th to 20th. And now you've got rid of him and bought another. And you're like, trust. I swear, only in English football, mate. Yeah. We need to do an Ajax style. Yeah, Ajax style. Yeah. It's almost like that worked because they were bottom of the league for how long? Where are they now? 
Cheers. Let's carry on. Big up DLS Emperor, new member, my guy. Come on, big up, bro. Mr. Waffle, this is uh, that's what we should name Canton. <laughs> Tom, conflict of interest. Yes, facts. Yep, bro, when you're buddied up with a football club, you can never, ever, ever say exactly what you think. And if he does think that, then it's just based off of literally fairy tale. Because the factual evidence suggests otherwise. But don't worry. There's plenty of us out there, like I've said. This is an alternative to all of this crap. Why do you why does he get so many views? Oh, it's all rivals. He's twerking for rivals. No, maybe, just maybe. Number one, I've got a personality. And then number two, I'm quite entertaining. Number three, I'm funny as fuck. Number four, I ain't got no filter. Number five, I'll bury anyone on, on a debate. In fact, if you want to debate, because in fact, we'll play that clip first, mate, yeah? We'll play that clip first. Anytime you want to debate me, mate, come on here or I'll come on your channel and I'll absolutely school you, yeah? Because your arguments are so wide open to be closing, mate. It is easy. Listening to your ch you chatting shit on Dan Potts' channel the other day, <laughs> you're so easy to close, mate, honestly. You can't blag a blagger. Can't blag a blagger, mate. Anyway, let's carry on. Big up to my boy Steve as well. Come on. Not relevant, but reading fans just stormed the pitch to protest against owners. Uh, yeah, our fans. What? Who? Who stormed the pitch, bro? Now don't it weren't an English club. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, though. We've bottled the title, but we brought a dog and called it win. Weren't the alarm bells ringing in the press conference? Oh, no, of course they weren't. Of course they weren't. They won't be ringing the alarm bells in there. No, of course they won't. They've got to get their tea and biscuits and get their little Christmas card and their bottle of bottle of wine, bottle of carver or whatever it was. Yeah. Talk sport moose, another prat. Yeah, he's on he's on the series at some point as well. Trust me, that guy chats absolute bollocks. Yeah. They all chat the same. They all chat exactly the same. It is crazy. Uh big up to uh Rage Tense uh for the super chat to my friend you could have put some comments in there i would have read them mate but thank you lee land in the minerals and smoking lego head packs <laughs> I'm bro i'm just sick to death for it i've supported this club home and away been all around the world watching this football club yeah and i've supported this club for over 35 years which i believe is probably older than how how long he's been on the planet this geezer yeah i've been following this football club and supporting this football club since before he was born. He was floating around his old man's sack, mate, when I was supporting this football club. Watching us win titles, by the way, under the best manager we've ever had, George Graham. Yeah? Don't worry about that, mate. Yeah? But these people, they love to sit there and chat absolute rubbish, think they're holier than thou, because they speak with dulcet tones and a posh accent. Shut up. No one cares. Yeah? No one cares. Big up to Chris New, becoming a new member. Big up to you, my friend. Back again, my guy. And uh, big up to Brian as well. Um, thank you, mate. Uh, only Arsenal fan with sense. Now, there's a few of us out there, bro. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the truth takes forever to come out, mate. Yeah, it always takes forever to come out. Because if a lie is told a billion times, it becomes the truth, my friend. Look at COVID. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, let's get some of these clips up. Let's get some clips. Let's get some clips. Where are me clips? Where are you? Let's be having you. Smash these likes up. We ain't even at 800 likes. You lot are slacking. I'll come to some comments in a bit as well, people. I'll come to some comments in a second. How do I share this? Is that the one? Yes, that's the one. Right. How do I play this? How do I share this on the screen? I want it on the screen. I want it on the screen. How do I share? In fact, I don't think I can do it that way. One sec. I think I have to pull it in to add video clip on StreamYard. But I'm not sure whether some of these go on there because they're like five minutes long. None of them will go on there. Fuck. Well, that's a shame. We're just going to have to play them off my phone then. It won't let me do it. The clips are too big, some of them. Well, that's jarring because I wanted it on the screen. But anyway... It is what it is. It is what it is, guys. It is what it is. Right, let's start with the first clip. Let's start with the first clip. Let's go. Let's do this. Volume up. Make sure you got your popcorn ready, lads. Make sure you got your popcorn ready. 
popcorn at the ready. Let's go. Go and watch yesterday's phone in show. Arteta out was trending, believe it or not, trending on social media yesterday morning. Over 2,000 tweets were sent in a very short space of time in the morning of January 1st, 2024, which led to Arteta out trending across social. So I thought, well, let's see if we can actually hear from any of those Arteta outers. Spoiler alert, we did a two-hour show, and we heard from from, from some fantastic guests. Some couple were skeptics for sure and will make their choices up at the end of the season but no arteta outers arrived absolutely none it's like either they don't exist or they do they're just but they're just they're just not really willing to to tell us why maybe it's they're maybe they're embarrassed i don't know but uh the search goes on for the arteta outer anyway moving forward the search goes on for the arteta outers how many people in this chat are arteta out and I know he's watching, so put you can email me, can't, and I'll get you right on here now because apparently you can't find any of us. Yeah, you know, well, I'm here every day, mate. Every day. Every day. Yeah, there's a load in my chat as well, mate, but they don't watch your dead channel, mate, because you're a prat. Yeah, but if you if you want to come on, I'll get you one right now. Yeah, I'll get you one right now. Yeah, and we'll proper finish you off. Pause. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Anytime, mate. Anytime, I will happily come on a show with you, yeah, and I'll ruin every single argument you have, yeah, every single argument you have. You will never beat me in a debate, yeah, because facts don't care about fairy tale storylines, yeah, or your media career, yeah. But my chat seems to, what's going on? Sorry, mate, but my chat seems to be lighting up with all these Arteta out fans. But I thought I was only twerking for rivals. Why are so many Arsenal fans in here? I thought it was only rivals that watch me. <laughs> Another myth. Yeah. Another myth. You lot can try as hard as you like, mate. Yeah. It's too late. It's too late, mate. It's too late. I ain't going anywhere. You can you've tried and tried and tried, you people over the years to shut me down, expose me. Yeah. Make out I'm this and I'm that and I'm this and I'm that. Yeah, cool. Guess what, mate? My channel grows every day and it grows quicker than everyone else's. Yeah. All of you pompous little twats, yeah. Right, it grows quicker than all of yours. Yeah, all of yours. Four thousand subs in the last twenty-eight days. Cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, one point four million views in the last twenty-eight days. Cool. Yeah, and that's without my second channel. Anyway, anyway, we'll share his chat. We'll actually share his channel in a second on the screen because we got we got to look at some of these these videos. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. But anyway, um, let's go with this one. This is off a of Dan Potts' show where I was no, listening to this. We need to have a project for, but he's the player that we bought. So he's the player that we've got right now. I can, we can have an absolutely separate conversation about Havertz entirely, but focusing on January, if your expectation is that we need to go and sign somewhere in January, it's just not going to happen. Like, because we you can't. can't with anyone. If I was a better man, I'd say don't expect any signings this month. Don't expect any signings this month, yeah? This is this guy, yeah? Don't expect any signings this month. That was, what, a couple of days ago on the uh, Dan Potts' channel, yeah? I'll carry on playing that clip in a second. Don't expect any signings at all this month. None at all. Okay, cool. Let me find this article we wrote a few days before that then. <laughs> I love this game. Where are you, Mr. Canton? Is that the one? Is that the article? Mm-mm-mm. Trust me, the slow cooking is going to be lovely. It's lovely, lovely. Where is it? Where are we? Smash these likes up, guys, because we're going to dissect this guy real quick. Real quick. Light work, my friend. We're going to ruin this guy. I'm sick to death of this geezer, mate. Yeah, I'm sick to death of him. Yo, Rance is in my chat. I've just seen this text. Where's Rance? 
Oh, bro, if you're in there, yeah, put another comment in because, bro, I, I can't even see it, bro. There's comments everywhere. If you're, if you're in there, put another comment in. I'll mod you straight up, yeah? Yeah, but trust me, there's enough of us out there this season, yeah, or this year, yeah, to end all of this fake traction and fake BS these people come out with. It is absolute rubbish. Yeah, but I'm going to find this article because a couple of days before that, he wrote an article. So he said, yeah, his words... Don't expect any signings in January, yeah? None at all. None at all. I'm going to find that article. One sec. Yeah, Rance, if you're still watching, bro, just put, just chuck a comment in and I'll mod you up, bro. But anyway, where are we? Where are we? Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. What's the headline on it? What was the headline? Ah, <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. This guy, bruv. This geezer. Ah, there we go. Found it. Found it, my friends. We found it. We always, always, always find it. We always find it, people. We always find it. We always find it in the end. We always find it. Big up to John Burgess as well, man. Appreciate the membership, my friend. I appreciate it. I can't see Rance in my chat, so he must not be watching anymore. But either way, I'll, I'll go back through the live later and mod him up anyway. But um, but yeah, anyway, let's uh, let's share. Let's share the goodies that we have stumbled across. Because this guy, let's just rewind it so you know what he said, yeah? Just in case you've just joined, yeah? Just in case you've just joined, yeah? Let's play it again a better choice to find a player already on the up that we didn't need to have a project for but project. he's the player that we bought so he's the player that we've got right now I can, we can have an absolutely separate conversation about Havertz entirely but focusing on January if your expectation is that we need to go and sign somewhere in January it's just not going to happen like because we you can't, can't be anyone. if I was a better man I'd say don't expect any signings this month I don't expect any signings this month yeah that was a couple of days ago on Dan Potts' channel. Now watch this. Now, my friends, watch this. Let's go. Smash these likes up, people. Smash these likes up. As you can see, Tom Canton on the 3rd of January, I think he went on Potts' channel, what, two days, three days ago? So around the 10th, so in the space of a week, after writing this abomination, Arsenal can benefit from the latest Premier League points deduction verdict. What does that even fucking mean? Arsenal can benefit from the latest Premier League points deduction verdict with triple transfer. So why are you writing about transfers for players that can come to Arsenal when you're now saying a week later that we now can't sign anyone? And don't expect anyone. What's that all about? What's that all about? Makes no sense, right? What are you waffling about? So in the space of a week, you've gone from triple transfer to absolutely nobody. Don't expect... If I was a betting man, yeah, if I was a betting man, I wouldn't expect any signings this summer. No, sorry, January. But you've just wrote an article a week before saying triple signings. Triple transfer, your words, look, your words. You then list the players on Amadou Anana, Morgan Gibbs White. <laughs> Who's the third one? Danilo. Your words, Tom. Your words. You're listing the players, mate. It's almost like you're chatting rubbish, isn't it, fella? What are you waffling about? With that in mind, both clubs need to raise funds to help them stay out of further punishment 
Arsenal could look to free potential players on either side this winter to try and get a cut price deal in order to strengthen their title challenge. Do you actually believe this crap, Tom? Real talk. Do you actually believe this rubbish? Do you actually believe this fellow? Honestly, all jokes aside, do you actually believe what you're writing in? Because from what I'm seeing and dissecting here, because another thing that I'm going to pull you up on, I'll wait for that, actually. I'll wait, I'll zip it, because I'm going to pull you up on that as well. Yeah, because one of your little chums called Josh Holland, yeah, absolutely ruined your argument, mate. Yeah, and he works at the same place. Yeah, like a you lot chat, absolute crap, I swear. <laughs> you lot chat, absolute rubbish. Yeah, you're finessing people online every day into believing this crap. Yeah, how about start saying it as it is, Canton? How about that? How about say it as it is, mate? So what you've done, yeah, is you have taken Everton's point deduction, right? Whilst Arsenal are not cut, yeah, let's read the thing. Let's read the start of this, yeah? Premier League clubs are set to learn in the next fortnight whether they will be facing any charges for breaches of the Premier League's profit and sustainability rules. Right, cool. So you're telling me that Arsenal Football Club are waiting with bated breath, yeah, to find out whether they've broken any profit and sustainability. Do me a favour. Yeah, you're telling me there's a multi-billion pound business doesn't know whether it's broken the profit and sustainability rules and we're waiting for the announcement which is coming on Monday, I think. Yeah, we're waiting from the Premier League. So on that basis then, mate, yeah, on that basis then, yeah, surely, surely, just surely, the people in high up positions at this football club are not doing their jobs properly then. If they don't know, we're waiting for Premier League big wigs. Maybe go and employ them. Because if we don't know and we're hoping, oh my God, oh my God, we need the Premier League to tell us if we broke the rules. Stop waffling. Yeah. Profit and sustainability. Waffle, waffle, waffle. Yeah. Unbelievable trash, mate. I am sick to death of you people. Anyway, let's carry on with this article. Arsenal have been working hard to, to <laughs> within the confines yeah, of the restrictions, hence the acquisition of David Raya on an initial loan move in the summer of 2023. Whilst Arsenal are not currently thought to be under scrutiny, the Times report both Everton and Nottingham Forest could face potential charges. A lot of coulds and ifs and whats and maybes, isn't there? Yeah, where's all the factual information, mate? Where's all the factual information? So off of the back of that, you've taken an article from the Times that, again, doesn't have any factual information to back it up. You've then clickbaited the title between you all that Arsenal can benefit from what I see is just a load of BS about Everton and Forest. Oh, yes. Well, listen, they may have broke the rules. We don't know. Because if they don't know, how do you know? How does the Times know? Because you've just said in this article, mate, yeah, that Arsenal are waiting to find out. Premier League clubs, all Premier League clubs, I'm taking that. Yeah, Premier League clubs are set to learn in the next fortnight whether they will be facing any char charges for breaches of the Premier League's profit and sustainability rules. So if the Premier League clubs don't know, how's this fella at the Times know then? And then you've taken his article, spun it into a... Right, what we'll do now is we'll make out Arsenal uh, could potentially get three players from these two clubs. You are chatting crap. You are chatting absolute rubbish. You then go on to list a Nana, Gibbs White, what, are you thinking these players are good enough for my football club? Are you mad? You are absolutely deranged and tapped, my friend. Yeah, I am sick to death of this crap. Every single day, you and your chums in the media are absolutely pants down to millions of people over the internet. It is a disgrace here, guys. Absolute disgrace. Yeah, absolute disgrace. Anyway, let's carry on with, uh, with the rest of that clip. Because we've got plenty more to go, people, and we're an hour in. Let's go. Didn't expect anyone. So of FFP, because of FFP, not FFP, profit and sustainability. 
because Newcastle apparently has come out. They're in trouble as well today. Yeah. With it, yeah. With this but how do they know? Which, which is mad, by the way. Who's just billionaire owners are now in trouble all of a sudden their first transfer. Yeah. What's going yeah, on? Because the rules have been implemented, Dan. These, the profit and sustainability rules are a new thing. They, people conflate the two things of FFP and profit. They're different. They're different. Cool. Where's Josh Holland's report? <laughs> yeah. One of his chums that works at the same rag. Yeah. Yeah. I read that out yesterday. Yeah, cool. Let's find this guy. Josh Holland. Football Mutant London. Josh Holland. There he is. Mm, let's see if I can find the article. Ah, here we go. Found it. Another clickbait. Another clickbait. Let's share this waffle. Because apparently FFP... And profit and sustainability are two separate things. His words. Accountability is the best ability, people, yeah? His words. They're two different things. One's UEFA, one's Premier League. That's correct. But they're the same thing, yeah? Even his mate, even his mate at the same newspaper says it. Oh, Chelsea, Arsenal, Chelsea and Tottenham handed new FFP verdict as Newcastle announced 150 million loss. Listen to this crap as well, by the way. Number one, yeah, number one, it takes quotes from the CEO of Newcastle who never once mentions that he might have to sell his best player or best players, yeah. Number two, it doesn't mention anything, yeah, anything about Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham handed a new verdict. Don't tell us nothing. Don't tell us nothing. Listen to this. I'm going to read the whole article out, yeah. Watch this. But you, you might need to have a word with your mate Josh, mate, because he wrote this on the 12th. And um, he's mentioned it's FFP. I thought it was profit and sustainability. Which one is it? Is it FFP or is it profit and sustainability? Which one is it, mate? Which one is it? Tell me, which one is it, lads? I'll come back to the comments in a second after I read this article, yeah? Anyway. Let's go. All the latest transfer news as Newcastle's latest accounts reveal the Magpies may be forced to sell one of their best players. May be forced to sell one of their best players. Remember that, yeah? To stay on the right side of FFP. Right? Arsenal, Chelsea and Tottenham will be keeping tabs on Newcastle United's financial fair play situation after the Magpies account showed a cumulative Loss of 114.1 million over two seasons. Eddie Howe's side have spent millions on new signings over the last two and a half seasons after the Saudi led consortium completed its 300 million takeover in 2021. Their spending has seen them finish in the Premier League top four last season, returning the club to the Champions League after 20 years. However, they now find themselves restricted. How? How does how does Josh Holland know? How does the Times know? But your article, Thomas, your article said the Premier League clubs will find out in a fortnight, and that was on what the third of January. They will find out in about a fortnight. So if the Premier League clubs don't know, how does Josh Holland know? How does the Times know? It's almost like you're all chatting shit, isn't it? Anyway. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. The club's latest accounts revealed a loss of 155 million over the past three seasons, a figure higher than the 105 pound. Man's literally written 105 pound. 105 pound. Did nobody, did none of the editors at football.london, the worst rag out there, did none of them proofread this? None of them check for mistakes? 105 pound. So the profit and sustainability yeah, limit is £105. Well, we're all bankrupt then. Everyone's gone, lads. We're finished. We're finished. We are actually dusted. Every football club in the Premier League is absolutely finished. The profit and sustainability rules say you can't go higher than £105. Nobody calls this crap out, by the way. Millions of people around the world have access to this. I don't know how many people read it, 
I can't imagine it's that many. I've probably got more people watching this stream than read this trash. But when they're throwing this stuff out there on their Twitter, their YouTubes and all of that, saying the same thing they're writing in their stupid articles they're lying, yeah, they're writing and lying about, nobody calls them out. Poor old Josh Holland, you've had a mare, bruv. £105 is the profit and sustainability limit. We're, we're all doomed. Man United, shut up, shop. Man City, every team in the Premier League, finished. The Premier League is no more, lads. We might as well go for the Super League. And on that bombshell, don't go anywhere. I'm going to get a beer out the fridge because we're going to cook this guy deliciously. Beautiful. Cheers. 10 seconds, guys. You can do it, guys. You can do it, guys. Out in these frauds. Fraudulent behavior. Lies to the public. We come to these comments. Ra, somebody's dropped 500 quid. Oh, my days. Brother. Did you put an extra zero on by mistake, my guy? <laughs> 500 quid are you sure bro keep up the good work fella the truth cuts deeper than anything mate bro are you sure 500 pounds oh my days bro that is the biggest super chat i've ever had previous biggest i think was 300 bro that's crazy honestly man i don't even know what to say that is insane bro like boy thank you very much like honestly mate that is crazy that is actually wild bro big up to you john Big up to you, John Burgess, man. That's unbelievable, bro. Thank you. Honestly, mate, you literally own the channel now. <laughs> hey, bro, you've actually spent, yeah, higher, yeah, than the profit and sustainability rules allow. Yeah, you're finished as well. <laughs> <laughs> you spent nearly five times more the Premier League profit and sustainability rules, mate. <laughs> No, nah, this is wild. I honestly, man, I don't, I can't, I, mate. Thank you, honestly. That's that's wild. Thank you very much, man. Thank you very much, my friend. What a ledge! Like, it's breaking the FFP rules, lads. Like, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not speechless very often. Yeah, five hundred quid, mate. Thank you very much, honestly. Ten point deduction for John. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, unbelievable, Jeff. Unbelievable, my bro. Uh, thank you to everyone who's becoming a member as well. Uh, Baron Von Noob. Baron Von Noob, big up to you, my friend. Big up to Jurassic Jai as well. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, reading, as in the club, they are, pay, they are playing... Oh, Reading. 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 I didn't... It is actually reading and reading. So, yeah, don't, don't hate me because you ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> uh Re reading as in the club are playing port uh, port vale uh game of the day my friends big up to uh big up to steven man uh i sent you the field tilt clip oh, it was you that sent me that field tilt yeah come on well, uh, bro trust me this year is the year of the truth mate this lot are getting put in the bin in la basura yeah do take inga noi we're saying romanian as well bruv yeah do take inga noi yeah we can say it in many many languages my friend Big up to you, uh, big up to you, Max. Big up to Peter as well. What's wrong with these mutant Twitter accounts? Bro, they all think that they're better than everyone else. They all speak with posh tones. They all think that they're doing something revolutionary by making up fake metrics to make out the club's great. The club's not great, mate. We don't need any of your opinions. We don't need any of your fake metrics. There is already defined metrics, predefined metrics in the game to determine what success is. They're called trophies. Yeah? Anyone else's opinion is irrelevant. Mine, yours, anybody else who stumbles across this stream, everybody's opinion is irrelevant. The predefined metric for success in football, trophies. That's it. Nobody can argue with that. It's been there for over 100 years. Anyway, let's carry on. Big up to Peter, man. Big up to John becoming a member as well. Bro, you might as well. I just might as well sign the channel over to you right now, bro. <laughs> Uh, brown envelopes in the mud, bruv. I'm going to mud them all year. Uh, big up to Zach Abassi as well. What's up, lead irony? Um, Arteta said he brought 
the tranquilize to increase physicality in the squad uh, is deluded. I'll tell you, I said he brought the tranquilized. I don't know what that means, bro, but thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, the tranquilized giraffe. Okay, I'll see your second super chat. <laughs> he does look like he's playing. Like Trank, he does. He genuinely does. You're right. Big up Jurassic Giant as well. Um, what would it take for these Arteta ins to become Arteta out? Well, we'll come to that in a second, mate, because I've got a clip of this geezer chatting waffle again. But we'll come to that in a second. Um, tranquilized giraffe. Big up to you, Zach, as well, man. Big up to Daryl as well. Asked after uh, leaving Salt Bay's restaurant, Mikhail with Arteta replied, but, 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 there's nothing wrong with tasting meat off another man's sword. <laughs> the reporter said, pause, and Arteta responded, no. <laughs> you lot are killing me. You lot are killing me. Hey, Pam, these likes up, people, man. Big up to everyone locked in as well. Big up to everyone locked in. Let's carry on cooking this. Let's carry on cooking. Let's let's read the rest of this. <laughs> let's read the rest of this article out, yeah? Because... Like I said, they've clickbaited Arsenal, Chelsea and Tottenham into this. Yeah, apparently this Josh Holland knows more than the Premier League clubs because Canton told us none of the Premier League clubs know until Monday. Um, so, yeah, let's carry on. £105, uh, £105 is the figure. Uh, clubs are not allowed to spend more than £105. I'd imagine that the meat Mikel was being serenaded with yesterday um, probably cost more than that. So we're dusted, lads. Uh, but anyway... Uh, let's carry on. But Newcastle Chief Exec Darren Ailes, is that how you say? Ailes, Ailes, uh, has accepted that they may be forced to sell one of their best players in the summer. Okay, cool. Asked if if every player has a price, he answered correct. Cool. He continued, if we're going to get to where we want to get to, at times it's necessary to trade your players. It's counterintuitive part of the PSR system, and there is an incentive to trade players if you want to reinvest that's just basics in football mate um newcastle's latest accounts provide the likes of arsenal chelsea and tottenham with a fresh verdict on ffp but i thought it was profit and sustainability uh, everton with dock 10 points blah 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 the ceo of newcastle then said everton's point deduction judgment showed that there were teeth to the psr regime and I think that's something that's probably focused a lot of minds within the Premier League. And this is something that is real, he said. To be clear, right from our takeover, we've understood that, um, that that's the regime that we are in and our business plan and everything we do um, are premised uh, on the basis that we are compliant. So where is he saying that they have to sell their best player? But I think it's fair to say that a lot of people probably didn't expect it to be the level it was but it's certainly focused minds, right? None of that article has mentioned anything about them having to sell any of their best players. Why are Arsenal, Chelsea and Tottenham in the headline when it's, when it's a Newcastle CEO talking? Makes no sense, right? It's almost like they're making it up. They're making it up. Clickbait, put Arsenal in there, we'll get more clicks. Oh my God, now they will go out there, all these people that have read that, and they'll be parroting everything that's in the article. Yeah, they'll be in my chat saying, but FFP, FFP, profit and sustain. Oh, but we can't spend. OK, well, if that is the case, let's assume it is the case and we are skin and we are skin. Yeah, that's even more damning on this football club's hierarchy and the manager that we went and done 65 million quid on that German giraffe. It's all, all, all on them if we are skin. Now I didn't Sambi Lukonga. Now I didn't Fabio Vieira. There's 116 million quid. Yeah. Now add in the wages. My man's getting paid 40 grand a day. 29 is bowling around on 40 grand a day. 1,666 pounds an hour, every hour of that Arsenal contract. Profit and sustainability, lads, yeah? Good one. Oh, yeah, let's talk about some loan players. Marquinhos. Free signing. This club paid two and a half million quid to the club to get him. Why? To keep good relations. Profit and sustainability, yeah? He was free. The geezer was a free signing. And we paid two and a half million quid to keep good relations. Profit and sustainability. How comes that ain't been investigated, by the way? Just saying. Anyway, let's carry on cooking cannon. 
now we've just uh, ruined his FFP as difference of profit and sustainability because his mates told us you can only spend 105 quid. FFP is a UEFA thing. Profit and sustainability is a Premier League thing. That's what Everton are feeling the heat for, obviously, and, and got their points deduction from. Nottingham Forest are going to be feeling the heat of this as well. How does he know? You think about the fact that, you know, clubs like Nottingham Forest haven't spent millions and millions for years. They got promoted to the Premier League. And in those two summers they've had, they've spent loads and now they're facing the heat. After just two summers of spending big, they could face some serious consequences for that serious spending. Mm. You know, clubs like Man City and Chelsea in the past have been able to evade this because these are new regulations that have come in. I would love to agree with you and go and sign a striker. If, if these didn't exist, I'd be saying the same. Go out and sign a striker now. Sure but I know that that cannot happen. I know that we cannot do that. So that's why I can't have the next. I can't judge the club for not going out into the market this January and going and signing Ozzyman or Tony or whatever because I know that they can't. That's unless we have a significant sale, which in itself is a difficult thing to do. We aren't going to be signing anyone. So, is there anything we can do then? This is a question for both of you. This window that can get us closer to winning trophies this season, or is it just no FF or not FFP? What you just said. It's not FFP. We're stuck with who we've got. Cannon's cold, everyone. It's not FFP. We can't get rid of Eddie. We can't get rid of Nelson. We can't get rid of Smith Rowe. Try and get some money. We can't look at getting rid of a fit Thomas party if he's not going to be fit for us the whole year. Or Ramsdale might want to move our way. We can't do any of that stuff to try and get some funds in. Surely we can do some selling, no? Go on, Casey. You can sell. Oh. You can sell. We can sell. So we can sell players, but we can't buy any. But surely, if we're skin, every other team's skin, right? So how can we sell? Because nobody's got money to buy them. Make this make sense. We're skin. We, we, we can't do anything, but we can sell players. But if we're skin, every other club's skin. And if that isn't the case, and other clubs have money, then we've mismanaged our funds then, right? Mismanaged our funds then, right? This lot chat, absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Anyway, let's carry on. Let's go to the next clip. Manager has to hold a lot of the is uh, if we spent on the team, is enough to start to suggest that we shouldn't be having this many holes yet in our team. But that's where I'm at. I think the manager has to hold a lot of the responsibility for those things the goalkeeper the lack of defenders the lack of midfielders and of course the top the strikers because there's not adequate cover bro oh that's but look i i absolutely respect your view and i agree with you on the goalkeeper thing i think we've created a needless situation with that well, I, I did you ask him in a press conference thomas why he signed another keeper for ourselves that in hindsight we didn't need to because i think that raya is maybe slightly better hold on so is that a mismanaged bit of funds there Profit and sustainability, obviously, we can't spend any money. So why did we go and do three million on a loan deal? Profit and sustainability, you keep waffling about it. You keep throwing it down everyone's throats. A bit like your manager was taking the meat yesterday. Like, what's going on here? 40 grand a day for 29. 280 grand a week, that geezer's nicking. Walking around the pitch like he's lost a puppy. Oh, where am I? Eating his skittles out of his socks. Yeah, what's going on here? 280 grand a week, 29 is earning at his football club. Three million loan deal. Didn't need him. His words, didn't need him. Made me, yeah, he's better. Yeah, I think he's better as well. But, you know, mismanaged the funds, yeah? Mismanaged the funds, yeah? Cool. What about the players that we've sent out on loan that can't get any games, like Sambi Likonga barely plays? Nuno Tavaj can't get any games. Yeah, Marquinhos coming back off loan. Can't get any games. It's going well, isn't it? But don't worry, mate. I heard you sit on a show the other I should have got that clip saying that most of the signings he's made have been really good. Well, there's three that ain't. What about the five goalkeepers he signed, mate, that are not better than Emmy Martinez? Yeah, how about that? All right, big up to Jurassic Drive for gifting 10 memberships as well. You lot are killing me in this chat today, man. Like, honestly, mad, mad love. I will, um, once I've done these next few clips, we will, uh, we will read out all the comments, or not all the comments, there's thousands, but I will read out a lot of the comments as well. I'm not starting for another hour anyway um, on the watch along. But let's carry on because this goes on for about another four minutes. Technical 
thing in regards to his distribution, his passing and things like that. But when I go, was it worth it? Has this situation been worth it? I, I don't think so. Rams is a really key part of that dressing room. He's really well liked and having this situation as is and him not being happy and he's not happy, to tell you that for a fact, you know. So you can tell us for a fact that Aaron Ramsdale is not happy. Why? Did you speak to him? Why haven't you wrote, wrote a piece on that? Anyway, I wrote a piece. No, you are a piece, mate. Anyway, let's carry on. Has that created a dynamic that has been beneficial really overall? Probably not. You know, I think this is maybe where there's a misconception. So about you... Cam, sometimes it's important to say that it's not about pro Arteta or anti Arteta. It's about being ground and objective and standing by your opinion and backing it up. And I think mm. that when there is something that's worth criticising, I'll do that. And I think the goalkeeping situation is something I would criticise and think we, we, we needlessly created that situation. Something I would criticise, which means you haven't then. I would criticise it, but I haven't. Why haven't you asked him in a press conference? You clearly get in them, mate. You clearly speak into Ramsdale. You clearly spoken to Gabby Jesus. Your words. Accountability is the best ability, Cannon. Your words. So why haven't you sat in a press conference then, like a good puppet? <laughs> oh, yes, Mikel. Hello, Mikel. He, he, he. Thanks for the team biscuits, Mikel. Yeah, it's just a jolly up with a bunch of pompous, condescending twats yeah, that are working indirectly for the club. Yeah, via this shit rag. Anyway, let's carry on. Situation. The the depth thing is is an interesting one. But the, we can talk about obviously how much Arsenal have spent over Smash the, the years in which the Arteta has been here. It's a lot of money, and that's because when he obviously arrived at the club, we've had to overhaul everything. We're basically he spent a lot of money because we had to overhaul everything. Factually incorrect information. Factually incorrect information. He chose to overhaul everything. We didn't have to overhaul everything. When he got to the club, let's go through it again. When he got to the football club, Emmy Martinez was at the football club. He inherited him. He inherited Leno. Yes, Leno's trash. Not very good. Raya Ram Ramsdale are better. I'll go with that. But have any of the goalkeepers out of the five or six that he signed been better than Emmy Martinez? No. When he got to the club, he inherited Kieran Tierney. He's now sent him out on loan. He's played Granit Xhaka at left back at one point, Nuno Tavares at left back at one point, Kalazanak at left back at one point, Kivior, Zinchenko. I could carry on. And now everyone's saying, oh, well, we need a fullback. Yeah, we need a fullback. Really? There's one playing in a, in a, a Basque derby tonight, mate, in an hour's time. Yeah? Who's saying that you don't want to come back? Good luck to you, Kieran Tierney. My birthday brother. We share the same birthday. My baller. Yeah, stay in Spain, bro. Yeah, F that football club. F that manager. Yeah, you've won more trophies in your lifetime, Kieran Tierney, at 26 years old than this manager will ever, ever, ever win as a manager. So big up to you, my friend. Big up to you. Big up to everyone in this chat. 2.4 locked in. Bang these likes up, guys. I'll come back to the comments in a second. Let's carry on with his words. Accountability is the best ability, yeah? Let's go. Basically changed out an entire 25. Um, we talk about Pepe. Hold on. He's changed out a whole 25-man squad. So we can hold him accountable then, right? Because it's now his squad. Cool. Carry on. Being, you know, Pepe not being replaced. Obviously, when Arteta came in, Saka was still a kid. He died. No, he wasn't. He was Six actually, or seven. Again, factually incorrect information. He was 18 years old. That's an adult, not a kid. But carry on. Premier League appearances. Um, I know people give Emery a lot of credit for giving him the debut, but it was Arteta established Saka as the player that he is and developed him in the player that he is today. Uh, okay, hold up. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Why are you only mentioning Premier League appearances, my friend? How many appearances did he make total under Unai Emery? You probably don't know because you haven't researched it, mate. Yeah. Carry on. Um, so he kind of replaced Pepe, if you like. You've got Gabriel Jesus, who's obviously come in to be one of those centre forward replacements, and he's renewed in Ketia to be the, the Lacazette, if you like, in that dynamic. Jesus, the Abamyang, Lacazette, the the Inketia. And so Eddie and Ketia has replaced Lacazette. That's what he's saying. And that is factually correct. He, he genuinely has. 
and you're happy with that. You're happy with that. Yeah, the guy is lying about Saka, bro. He's lying about Saka. And Saka was quality under Emery. Let's not forget that. Yeah, let's not forget, right? Because these people love to forget this as well. Let's not forget that Gabriel Martinelli scored about 10 goals in 12 games under Unai Emery playing as a striker. Yeah, let's not also forget that Chris Wheatley and all these other mutants out there, puppets, yeah, brown envelope brigade, yeah, was sitting there telling us when he was sat on the bench for six months, yeah, oh, we're converting him to a striker. And Wheatley actually posted out a video on his Twitter account of training ground footage of Martinelli bagging a couple of goals in training as a striker. How many times have we seen him as a striker, lads? Yeah? Do me a favour. These people chat absolute crap. Yeah, but don't worry. We are here to dispel the myths and the lies. Let's go. The reason why we renewed those two players, which I know is a point of contention for the expression on Dan's face right now. Um, <laughs> the reason why we renewed those players, and whilst I would love Dan to have, instead of renewing them, signed better players, I would have loved to have done that. You know, But the reason why we renewed them is because our selling has been horrific and now there's been reasons behind that in regards to inheritance so because this manager inherited a squad we can't get a fee for the players okay can somebody explain to me our man city got 18 million quid for trafford their goalkeeper who plays for burnley now can somebody explain to me how chelsea managed to get £60 million for that German giraffe. Can somebody explain to me how they got £60 million for Mason Mount with a year left on his contract? How about Liverpool? Yeah, Who was the striker that's at Sheffield United? What's his name? What's the lad's name? He had the haircut with the Champions League medal around his neck. What's his name? Yeah, How did they get £27 million quid for him? But we can't get any money for Kalazanak, for Pepe, Mesut Ozil, Brewster, Rian Brewster, can't big up the chat. Ozil, Abamyang. How did Barcelona get money for Abamyang, but we didn't? Make that make sense? Full of crap. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. And there's been reasons that I think we've been poor in some areas, like getting a few million from Avrapanos or a few million for Genduzi or a few million for Leno. You know, so there's cases where you can argue certainly we should have been better. But mm. to address that, we've got to put strategies in place. We've got to get better. And so if you're going to have two Hailing graduates that on paper are worth, in the case of Nelson, I'd say at least about 15 million. In the case of Inketi, you're at least be looking for about 30 million quid. Some people might scoff at that, but I think you should be aiming for that. That's 45 million quid of pure profit. The one Factually incorrect information. It's not 45 million quid of pure profit, mate. They're not playing for free. Yeah? They're both on 100 grand a week. Eddie's been on 100 grand a week for how long? 18 months? 18 months. That's over 7 million quid, mate. What are you waffling about? Yeah, Reese Nelson's been on 100 grand a week for six months. What are you waffling about? You know, that's 10 million quid if you add it up. So it's not 45 million of pure profit. Faith. Fake information, misinformation. Yeah, not only that, how much were they on before that? Now add up all of that for the lifetimes that they've been here. Because Eddie and Ket has been getting paid a wage at this football club for at least seven years. I was at his debut against Norwich when he scored twice. Knocked him out of the cup. So what are you waffling about? How long has Reese Nelson been at this football club? How many years has he been taking money out of this football club as a wage? What are you lying for? So it's not 45 million a pure profit, as you say it. I thought you were smart. You used to be a teacher. Mad. Carry on. Whilst we have these profit and sustainability restrictions, we need to be working to try and work with them. And so that's oh. why you renew those guys. That's oh. why you keep them in. But it also means that then when we go to reinvest, when we go to try and stop ourselves from being short, as we try to do in the summer, we need to have a bit of fortune. And that didn't happen this season. As we competed for the title, we had Thomas Partey's best season of availability. I think he played 33 Premier League games, something like that. This season is his worst, which sucks for us. So Thomas Partey's best season of availability was last season. So it's almost like we already knew, because he's been here for how long, that he's not very fit. Pause. He's not always available. We'll put it in a better way. 
He's not always available. And last season was his best season of availability. This season's been his worst. So it's almost like we already had enough sample size to know that we can't rely on Thomas Party staying fit. But we went and did 60 million quid on a German giraffe. Well done, mate. Yeah, well done. Carry on. The player that we brought in to bring real depth in the defence, you're in Timber, 38 million quid's worth. You know, not so long ago, that's four million off our record signing. Not so long ago, that's four million off a of Mesut Ozil, is basically what he's saying. Uh, when did we sign Mesut Ozil? Not so long ago, yeah? I didn't have a five head. Not so long ago then. I didn't have a YouTube channel. Not so long ago then. It's over a decade, mate. What are you waffling about? What are you chatting about? You chat absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Yeah. Not only that, that guy got injured, Timber. 15 days, 15 days later, we loaned out Kieran Tierney. Yep. We're dealing facts about the club. Let's carry on. You know, 38 million quid's worth of defender in Urien Timber comes in and we lose him straight away. Fantastic video, by the way, just gone up on the Arsenal page. He's doing ball work in Dubai. Oh, so he's he doing is, ball work. Um, closing in on that return, I estimate March. Oh, he's yes, he's back in March. Return. What's that got to do with um, anything? But the plan throughout, I think, was for Rice and for Partey and for mm. Timber and for Havertz to be key parts of this team this season. And we've lost parts. two of those really key parts. And that has meant that we've lacked depth at right back with Ben White, you know, carrying this knee injury and not having a, a chance to rest. So Benjamin White is carrying a knee injury. So that's um, that's the manager's fault then, that he's still playing him then, yeah? The manager's still playing a player that he knows has an injury. That's to the detriment of our football club, to the detriment of our football team, to the detriment of his health. What are we doing here, lads? What are we doing here? Because according to him, and he's in the know, Benjamin White is playing with an injury. Or is that another lie, Tom? Let's carry on. We've had Tommy Asu missing for, for key periods in Chico's oh, games. We obviously don't have Tommy now. Um, we've lost players, like as I've already mentioned, Partey. Erdegaard had his hit and his concussion period when oh. he was out as well. Oh. Smith Rowe, yes, I think he could be given more minutes, but he's obviously been missing. Vieira has been missing since oh. November. Um, you go into the forward line, there was a period where we were without both Trossard and Martinelli. Saka was out for a massive game. We still managed to beat Man City without him. And Jesus has obviously missed huge amounts of games as well. Okay, cool. Almost like it's a recruitment issue, Tom. It's almost like it's a recruitment issue and the bench ain't fixed, mate. Because I ain't seen any Real Madrid fans out there when they've had 20 injuries this season. Yeah. Three of their players that are first team players, Alaba, yeah, Courtois, and Militao have all done ACLs this season. And most of them, well, two of them, yeah, so most, two of them did them real quick in the start of the season. Now I didn't Kepa being out injured. He's now just returned. Camavinga's missed loads of games through injury. Vinny Jr. missed six weeks. Yeah, could carry on, mate. Shua many, another one. How are they top of the league? How are they bringing on Tony Cruz and Camavinga off the bench? Almost like they ain't got a recruitment problem, mate. Almost like they know what they're doing. Almost like they've got a good manager. Just saying. Just saying, mate. Anyway, this cooking has been excellent. Uh, we've still got plenty to do as well. We do about, well, we do as long as it takes. I'm not live for another, in fact, I need to set that watch along up. So while we listen to the last bit of this waffle, uh, I'm going to set my watch along up real quick. Turn around and say, this is just excuses. It is excuses. And you can call it that. I don't call it excuses. I call it reasons. I say these are reasons as to why we've not been as, we haven't had the depth that we would like. And these are reasons They're why reasons, we haven't been as we would like. And even in spite of all those things, as Kev said, not so long ago, we were still top of the table, and we're still only five points off of it, and we're still level on points with Man City if they've got a game in hand. So despite all that adversity, this manager still got us into a place where we're competing still. Almost like he's chatting crap, isn't it? Yay. We was top of the league. We're not anymore, but we're only five points behind, and Man City we're level with, and they've got a game in hand. Oh, is this the Man City team that's finished and we've bridged the gap? Yeah? Aston Villa were top of the league. 
Yeah, Aston Villa have been top of the league this season. Tottenham were top for three months. What are you waffling about? But we were top of the league champions. Idiots. Absolute wasters, a lot of these people, man. Sick to death of them. Absolutely sick to death of them. They're all getting buried this season. Honestly, man, I am sick to death of this crap. Anyway. Right, the watch along setup. Let me come to some of your comments. Then we're going to play another clip. We've got clips for days. Clips for days, my friends. Big up to Zakabasi as well. Mick run the no more red PR against knife crime, only to end up with Salt Bay feeding him red meat with a knife. <laughs> and do you know what's funny? Ian Wright tweeted at half time in that game we need a killer. We need, yeah, what? Excuse me? Why are we wearing a white flag? <laughs> These people are tapped. <laughs> Big up, my friend. Big up to Craig as well for the membership. Appreciate it, buddy. And to uh, Jurassic Jai as well. Thoughts on the debate um, that we spent 59 and not 70. Oh, you mean 590 M's and not 700? Um, to be fair, I think that's about right. The yeah, transfer marks have got it down as 590 mil. So, I'd imagine it's about that. I'd imagine it's about that. Anyway, let's carry on with this waffle session. And big up to everyone who's locked in. I'm going to come to some other comments in a second, yeah? But we've got some more cooking to do. Let's go to this one. Here, short here, short here. You're spot on. I agree with you. We need more quality in the forward line. We need more quality in the midfield. And we need more quality in the defence if we're going to compete with Man City. It's just the capacity to be able to do that. I don't have the capacity. <laughs> That he's stopping. How, how, how many more windows is that going to take if we're honest opinion at the top? And how much more money? This is Listen what my question is. Listen to this. Because we just yeah. keep going and going and going until we like, right now, yeah. like, what year are we going to be ready? Yeah. 2029 yeah. is this going to take? Like, you, how you long? Keep going, yeah. keep going, mate. You keep going. So in the summer. How many, how many windows then? How many windows? I can't be a number of window, windows down. All I can say how is in the summer. It's acceptable to you, though. It's not about what's acceptable, mate. It's, just... it's not about what is acceptable. That right there tells you everything you need to know about this geezer. He couldn't give two flying fucks about this football club. All about that and gaining access to it. That's it. Yeah? doesn't matter what's acceptable. It's not about what's acceptable. As long as I got my access and I look like I'm doing great in my life, fair play if you are, mate. Good luck to you. Yeah? But trust me, I will call you out on your crap. The same as people call me out on when I talk crap. Yeah? doesn't matter about it it doesn't matter about when it's what's acceptable we just go with the flow because i've got access and i can see super mick in person <laughs> wasters too many of these people have infested our great football club there are too many of them there for the payroll mate there for the payday yeah there for the payday anyway let's carry on whoops that's on mute if we're going in the right trajectory, yeah, just keep going forever otherwise. <laughs> yeah, so that's what, happens when you're about, that's what happens when you started your project years and years behind Pep started is at Man City. So because we started our project years behind Pep at Man City, that means we're exempt and immune from winning stuff because we spent less than Pep has since he's been there. On that basis then, Thomas, because I know you're still watching, uh, big up to you, mate. Well done. Um, fully exposed, cooked deliciously. Um, on that basis, then, how did Ranieri win a league? Oh, but that was an anomaly. Cool. Cool. Okay, then. How did Conte do it then, mate? Because he didn't spend more than Pep. Furthermore, why do you lot love to waffle about Pep? Why don't you use Liverpool as the example? Three Champions Leagues. Three Champions League finals he has been to. Oh, it took Klopp four years. Took Klopp four years. No, it didn't. It took him three. In fact, it didn't take him three because you lot love to waffle about top four. Yeah, he got in the top four in his first full season after losing the Europa League final and the League Cup final and finishing eighth in his half season, three quarter season. He then qualified for Champions League, got straight to the final, lost, qualified again, got straight to the final and won it. So it took Klopp three years, didn't it? And if we're actually being genuine about it, because you lot love to waffle about top four, it actually took him. 18 months. 18 months. Your manager, how long? Oh, three seasons to finish above Unai Emery's only season. Wow. Wow. 
So Jurgen Klopp has won a Champions League, a Premier League, a League Cup and a FA Cup. He's been to two losing finals in the Champions League. He's lost a Europa League final and he's been in about three or four title races, losing out by one point a couple of times. But I'm supposed to believe that Super Mick, yeah, can't compete. Almost like we need a better manager then, isn't it, mate? Yeah, almost, almost like we need a better manager then, isn't it? Carry on. The under resources that are in question right now. Well, so we give him another three years. Hang on. Another... Under resources that are being questioned right now. Every time you mention how long does it take to these idiots? How many more windows? How long is it going to take before we can actually accept? success is the only thing we'll accept before these every time you do that how long is it going to take for these people to get on board yeah without waffling about charges that man city may or may not be sanctioned for that is pathetic yeah every single time you bring up how much money super mick has spent oh but man city of course 150 okay what about jürgen mate what about jürgen do i have to bring up the chart again what about real madrid Real Madrid has spent in the last 11 years, 11 since 2012, 134 million euros more than Arsenal. Gross. Not net, gross. 134 million euros more than Arsenal Football Club. How are they competing? Because they've spent half a billion less than Barcelona. Gross. Factual information. Don't care about your waffling. Yeah, and about your fucking made-up bullshit. I'm sick to death of these people. Anyway, carry on. Six windows. Just listen to that last bit again. Give him another three years and another six windows. It's not about how many years you give him. It's not about how many years you give him. I'm sorry, what is going on here? We've been infested, lads. Absolutely infested. Anyway, let's go to Thomas's channel. And then I'll come to your comments afterwards. Let's go to Thomas's channel because he's told us profit and sustainability. We can't buy anyone. Yet a week earlier, he was telling us we're going to do a triple signing. <laughs> these people. So easy to close these idiots, man. They're thick as pig shit. Anyway, let's type in this geezer's channel. Where is he? There he is. There he is. Right. Okay. Cool. Share stream. Share. Share screen. Let's go. The Guna talk. He's got a verified tick. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, to get a verified tick on YouTube, you have to have a hundred thousand subscribers, unless you're a media lovey, and then you can get one on fifty. Got forty thousand subs more than this geezer. I don't have a tick yet. I have to get to 100k. No drama. I don't care about the tick. I care about factual information. Um, this is the same guy that criticized me for selling merch. <laughs> merch and then sold his own. Criticized me for doing memberships. And now there's a join button. Cool. We know what your game is, mate. Anyway, let's go to his lives. Arsenal transfer show. Why are you doing a transfer show, Thomas? We ain't signing anyone. We've got no money, mate. We ain't signing anyone. 50 million. Zerky. Arsenal transfer show. Why are you doing all these transfer shows, mate? Oh, tactical breakdown. Oh, look at me. Yes, the XG for this. Nobody cares. You're lying to everyone, mate. Party back this month. Mayoral, I can tell you right now, that geezer's trash, and I watched the league, mate. He is no good. No moves for Arsenal in January. Well, at least you told the truth on that one. Or did you? Are you lying on that? Are we signing anyone or are we not? I don't know what... I don't know what it's confusing, mate. Because you're doing these transfer shows. But why are you doing these? Why? Why are you doing transfer shows? Because you're telling the world that we can't sign anyone. So basically what you're saying is all of these transfer rumours from your chums in the media are made up then. That's what you're basically saying, right? Because you've told us, you've told us on Dan Potts' channel that Arsenal, if you as a betting man, don't expect Arsenal to sign anybody because we're restricted 
by profit and sustainability rules. So on that basis, then, anyone who's writing stories about Arsenal, uh, players linked to Arsenal in your media circle is making them up then. Too easy to close, mate. You're like a door. Too easy to too easy to close. Crazy, isn't it? Left back priority. But you said that there is no that was nine days ago. Look. Left back priority. Big signings are ruled out, but left back is a priority. It's not like we've got one on loan, is it? But you then said a week later that we can't sign anyone. So as a left back a priority. Make this make sense. Kadioglo bid talk. What bid? There ain't been a bid. We ain't bid for him. Nobody even knows who he is, bruv. He's 24. Nobody knows who he is. If he's that good, he wouldn't still be playing in Turkey. Let's be real with it. Get out of here, man. You chat rubbish. This has been complete and utter carnage. Highlighting them. Arteta hints at transfers. Funny that, because he told us the other day we ain't signing anyone, so is he a liar as well? Three plus targets for 24. I like the way you styled that one out, mate, because that could be summer targets, isn't it? Yeah, you dickheads. Anyway, Arsenal lead. What's the Ignacio race? What race? We can't sign anyone. That was two weeks ago, Thomas. You told us the other day we can't sign anyone. Did you suddenly get new information? Because the club don't know about it. You've told everyone yeah, that we have to wait for the verdict. You have to wait for the verdict. So how do you know what we can do? Paulinho price tag. Tom talks to Benjamin White. <laughs> I know your game inside out, fella. All about the clout. Oh, look at me. I'm talking to players. I'm interviewing the manager. Arteta wants four players. That was three weeks ago, Thomas. But surely, if you know that we can't sign anyone, the manager does. Watkins is on the list. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. You chat absolute rubbish, mate. Anyway. Anyway, let's carry on with the comments. Exactly. What about profit and sustainability? We can't sign anyone, people. What's he waffling about? This has been glorious. Mad. Actually mad. Anyway, the Red Clubs were hijacked by mutants years ago. Do you know what? Do you know what's mad, Super City, yeah? Right? It's no coincidence that both of Manchester United and Arsenal have been absolutely crap on the football pitch for, what, a decade or more. And both of them clubs have got more of these people, like Tom Canton, infesting their football clubs than any other clubs in the Premier League. I don't see this rubbish at Liverpool or Man City. Funny that, isn't it? They've also got two big fan channels that chat absolute crap as well. Funny that, isn't it? Yeah, Neil Ashton is Man United's PR guy. Tells you all you need to know. He used to work for the Sun. Anyway, let's read these comments out, guys. Uh, I am going live in 35 minutes, 30 minutes for the uh, for the Man City game. I'm starving. I need to eat, man. Um, Lee, 29 inch. <laughs> Big up my boy from Bosnia, man. Sent you a message on. I don't even go on TikTok, bro. I'll, I'll check it out when I get when I do. Actually, I, I barely go on it, but I will at some point, my friend. Um, you're the best, bro. Big up to you, my friend. Thank you for the love as always. Big up to Thermal. When can we actually win? All we do, all we want to do is win. Exactly, bro. This is the thing. These people chat absolute rubbish, rubbish. Um. We would be idiots to sleep on Xavi Alonso this summer. Let's see if he wins the league. Yeah, I think it's a bit too soon. Uh, he's doing well, but they've got um, Boniface out injured, a few other players out injured. Bayern won yesterday. I think they're playing today. But um, but yeah, let's see. Let's see how he does for another couple of seasons, which is what this manager should have done. He should have gone and applied this trade somewhere else. And if he's good after three or four years, then we get him in. But the fact that no one really kicked off when a geezer who's never managed a football club before walks into the third biggest club in England and gets the job and nobody batted an eyelid. 
tells you all you need to know. The PR is strong with this manager, man. It's crazy. Yeah, but don't worry. This is the year of truth. Yeah, ripping these people's stupid wafer fin. Yeah, propaganda to pieces. Because it is wafer fin when you strip it back. Yeah, most people are thick, so they'll just go with it. Yeah, but if you're actually switched on, yeah, and I'm the sharpest knife in the drawer, mate. Yeah, trust me, I will rip this lot all year. I don't care. I do not care. I am sick to death of my football club that I've supported for nearly four decades being infested with people like him. You know, chatting rubbish, spreading fake news yeah, and narratives to the masses. Not having it this year. I've had enough. Big up to uh, Hengedi as well. Appreciate the uh, membership, my friend. And Undertow as well. Arsenal needs Alonso. Uh, Teta won't win anything. Teta won't win a major honour at this football club, bro. He won't. He genuinely won't. Said it before he even got the job. Big up from Norway. Hey, right, big up to you, my guy. Do you rate Martin Odegaard? Because I've never met a Norwegian. I've got a lot of Norwegian subscribers that come in my chat. And I've never met one that actually understands why he's captain of the country and why he's rated. Do you rate him? Maybe you do. In a perfect world, who would you want as manager? Don Calito, Ancelotti. That's who I want. Ancelotti. Odegaard's good. Fair enough, brother. You're the first Norwegian that's ever said that in my chat. Big up to you. Big up to you, mate. But, um, yeah, Ancelotti. But what did he do at Everton? Nobody cares, mate. There's an argument to say he's the greatest manager of all time. Yeah, hit these likes up as well. Come on. 2.3K have watched this glorious cooking. 15,000 people live. Average watch time, 26 minutes, 24. Oh, my days. That is longer than watching an episode of Coronation Street. Least we've got this out there and exposed the mutants, the mutant journos lies. But don't worry, this is a regular series that will be happening quite often, my friends, uh, because uh, Charlie Boy Watts is next. Cheers. Oh, I wrote a book about Mikhail's revolution, one trophy in 16. What are you waffling about? Ancelotti had Everton up in second at one point. He did, didn't he? He did. He beat this manager home and away. Keep smashing the likes. Yeah, come on, tell him, bro. Big up what rights wildlife. All right, let's do a couple more minutes. And I'm going to eat some food. I'm going to maybe order some food. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Big up, Lee. Big up to all of you lot, man. What about the show on the terrace? I'm not on there anymore, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm just doing my own thing now, man. Yeah, big up to Fluers, though, man. Appreciate him having me on for two and a half years. Mikel era seems darker than the late Wenger era. It is. Factual information, bro. I went through it at the start. Factual information. Yeah, come on. That guy's a wrong one, mate. That guy's a wrong one. I wrote a book about you. Of course you did. Of course you did. I'm pissing myself for about an hour. It's a shame we didn't have YouTube when we were growing up, Lee. The world would be a different... It would. So many of these people have infested everything, mate. They've infested everything. Yeah, I might order a lamb fowl. I might get a lamb fowl, to be fair. That could be the one. Show with Curtis. Yeah, some point, bro. Some point. Oh, big up to everyone who's locked in, man. Jacka went to Leverkusen to win the league. <laughs> this lot are in for a short, sharp shock. Um, because we're in a top four race. I said this at the start of the season and was laughed out of town. I also rated the window a four out of ten and was laughed out of town. Funny that, isn't it? But don't worry. When when Ange finishes above us or Unai Emery or both, yeah, maybe, just maybe, these pricks will wake up. Who knows? Maybe they won't. It's almost like they're playing a game just to keep their access. But anyway, 93.5k. We are... 412 away from 94k so if you haven't subbed uh please do that'd be great and uh, i need to set the redirect up because it's going to redirect to my watch along for the man city game let me just set that up real quick and i'll read some more comments out guys you can do it guys come on guys let's get these likes up mm -hmm. why ain't it showing my watch along the reacts there it is. Lee reacts. Bosh. 
yeah make sure uh, when you redirect over there that you are subbing to that channel because it's closing in on 25k as well i think i'm gonna sneeze people one sec it appears to have gone I feel like i'm gonna sneeze <laughs> anyway let's carry on let's carry on and do a couple more comments Let's read a few more comments. Uh, big, uh, big up to everyone who's uh, dropped a comment, a like, a share, membership, 18 members. And uh, big up to um, to John Burgess as well. 500 quid super chat is wild, bro. Big up to you, my friend. Thank you very much. Biggest super chat ever on this channel. Yeah, Charlie Boy Watts. Yeah, I know he slags me off all the time as well. <laughs> when he's around his chums in the pub. Always slags me off. I don't really care, to be honest with you, because I... I'd love to do a, a show with him and absolutely Berry is the is absolute waffle as well. Yeah, but they all speak the same. They all speak with the same phrases and tones. They all look exactly how I expect a puppet journalist to look. Because they're not journalists, let's be real, they're just puppets. They're working on behalf of the club indirectly. That's it. They're basically working on behalf of the club to peddle out the narrative to the masses. And like I've said before, yeah, all well and good sitting in a press conference and speaking to players. I have more sources in that football club than all of these people. Hence why I know that Mikel Arteta has banned certain people from press conferences. Because it is Super Mick that runs that football club top to bottom. Hence why, hence why it's going to have to go real bad for him to get sacked. But he may leave. We live in hope. No, it won't Gal Davis. Gal, da Gal Davis is probably the only real one out there. Yeah, she proper, proper tells him what time it is, and he don't like it. Is it a surprise as soon as Arteta joins you lot for Man City, we reach two finals and a semi-final of the Champions League? <laughs> is it any coincidence you've won three league titles in a row since he's joined? Funny that, isn't it? He was close to, yeah, he said he was close to leaving last season. So, yeah, trust me, if Tottenham or Aston Villa finish above him this season, he's leaving. He'll be Barcelona manager. Because uh, El Sapo is not staying for much longer, my friend. El Sapo. Now, big up to everyone locked in, man. I'm going to wrap this up. I need to... Um... Gal Davis got banned, did she? Wow. There you go. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up because I am starving. I need to eat something, man. I'll just make a quick sandwich and order some food. But um, yeah, I'll be live in about 15, 20 minutes on the uh, the other channel. It's been a glorious two-hour cooking session. Uh, cooking with Gunner uh, has been a success. New year, new Lee. Big up my boy, Connor, man. I think we're all loving the new Lee. Oh, bro, I ain't mucking about this this year, mate. I've had enough of people. Yeah, normalize telling people to fuck off. Yeah, don't just say no. Yeah, that don't work. F off, mate. Yeah, that's what you got to do. Yeah, that's what you got to do. Just normalize saying F off, mate. Jog on. Have <laughs> Gal Davis on your next stream. But now, honestly, big up to everyone who's locked in, man. This has been elite. 15 and a half K live views. Uh, over 2K watching continuously, pretty much. Um, I think we peaked at about 2.6. And uh, 1,300 likes. We're profiting off of... Uh, Profiting off of truthful information and burying misinformation. Big up to my boy for the 500 quid donation. Big up to everyone else who's dropped donations in as well. And uh, yeah, it's going to redirect to Lee Reacts for the watch along for the Man City away game to Newcastle. Uh, make sure you go and spam the like button on there. Make sure you sub to that channel. Make sure you sub to this one. And uh, big up to everyone who's locked in. Um, if Canton's still watching, start telling the truth, fella. Yeah, because we could do part two if you want, and part three. We can do we can we we can do phases like the Marvel series and all of that. We can do all of that, mate. They could be because that that was just a mile. I could do this for seven hours. Yeah, the best never rest. Ask Mesut Ozil. <laughs> and you know I've got mad work rates like your boy Eddie. Yeah, so trust me. Yeah, start telling the truth, otherwise we'll have part two up real soon. Adios, amigos. Lee, Lee reacts, go and raid it, spam the chat, spam the like button 
on that channel as well and this one. Big up to everyone who's locked in and we're out of here. Adios, amigos. Ciao.